So my name is Stefan Waltz. I'm not going to use those microphones. Um, I'm uh, uh, the chair of the, uh, and I guess the license holder of Games for Change Australia New Zealand. Um, I'm uh, going to tell you a couple of things about what we're planning. Uh, this is a new thing. Uh, we're bringing Games for Change uh, to Australia, New Zealand, ANZ. Um, the license holder really is uh, my university, RMIT, uh, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and uh, I'm the director of the GLAB there, the Games and Experimental Entertainment Laboratory. And we've got a couple of partners already interested in what we're doing. Uh, City of Melbourne and Fed Square, which is, uh, you know, a nice place, a new place, a <coughs> revamped, I guess, a site, uh, formerly uh, really the site of two ugly buildings. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is the, the, the location uh, where we'll do this. Uh, it's just for starts, I uh, wanted to point out that we're here at the moment, and <coughs> Melbourne uh, is here, here down here, and um, uh, New Zealand is here just to, you know, so you have a good feeling well, what we're talking about, and you probably know uh, a number of things about us, um, us being Australia, really, in that case. Games that come from Australia uh, that are pretty known are, uh, you know, Fruit Ninja and uh, Flight uh, Control. <coughs> but uh, do you know something about RMIT? No, you don't, but that's a pity because it's a very big, in fact, the biggest university in Australia. Um, it's been around for a couple of years, um, decades, and uh, big and very international. Um, we've got around 75,000 students, which is a lot, uh, considering that we only have, you know, uh, 20 odd million people living there. And how many? 10 in, in New Zealand? No, I'm kidding. 4.2. Yeah, yeah, 4.2, I know. <laughs> 10 sheep. That's right. Oh, More sheep there, no, 10 more. No. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's RMIT. A uh, little bit about RMIT's strategic plan because it needs to fit in to what we're doing with Games for Change. Um, so we're trying to balance this is we're global, yay. We're really urban, yay. And we're connected. And uh, we're trying to express this with what we're doing with Games for Change. Now, a little bit about my lab, um, the G Lab. Actually, uh, we're looking at game design and how to apply game design to all kinds of different fields. And I've been doing this kind of research and really also professional work for many years now. Um, over 10 years. And um, I'm you know, running this uh, place now with full uh, time PhD people, two postdocs, and we're running two sites actually, one in Melbourne and one in Karlsruhe, because I'm from Germany originally. And, um, We've signed, just signed a deal with the city of Karlsruhe, which is the major computer science and games hub uh, in Europe, really, because it has the largest German game developer, Gameforge, sitting there, uh, doing a lot of browser games. Cheap ass games, really, <coughs> you could say, but they are changing the picture because they're using browsers a lot. So we're trying to work with them, too. And we've got people all over the place. So, um, what we're trying to do with Games for Change in Australia and New Zealand is we're wanting to look at social change, but also really look at changing the game. And this is not because AMD is not here any longer. Uh, this is really because this is really part of my research in a way. And uh, I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, meaning, how can you use games to address, to change the way we ideate, we are coming up with ideas, we're changing processes and businesses, how we engage workforces, these kinds of things. I've been working a little bit in the health field, uh, doing the health games. Um, we're also looking at games and also entertainment, so we want to move beyond the, I think, limited view of games themselves, because they're limited because they always afford a system. And uh, I think they could be about play, we could think about toys, we could think about, you know, interactive theater, perhaps, that involves participatory theater. Uh, Augusto Boal, we've just talked about Latin America. Uh, he is a famous theater uh, person in Latin America <coughs> who was, um, wrote this book, Theater of the Oppressed. So I always think of it where you get people to, you know, play theater on the streets. And so there's all kinds of interesting ideas out there. We can use media 
um, with, say, older forms of entertainment, and I'm very interested in this. Um, the, here's the link to the urban sort of st strategy or uh, part of the strategic plan. I'm really interested in addressing the issue of the city um, with Games for Change Australia and New Zealand. Why? Because we will be increasingly living in cities in the future. And um, so um, it's a big issue because of density, sustainable living in cities, uh, traffic, youth, you know. Um, and so a lot of it, it is tied to that in Melbourne is uh, predestined almost because uh, it's, you know, just been voted most livable city in the world, uh, just beat uh, Vancouver. So there's always this struggle over this between Vancouver, Melbourne, and Vienna, I think, and Zurich. I used to live in Zurich, so the last cities that I've been living in are the most livable cities in the world. Yay! So the next city will be Vancouver, ergo, which is kind of funny, really. It could be. And play, learning, and ha uh, play and learning are, you know, essential to what we're doing. Play is part of games. Games are part of play. Um, a lot of these games have been grown out of the learning um, environment. Um, health is a big topic, and of course, we want to uh, develop the organization and develop the community in Australia and New Zealand. So, just to give this a uh, little bit of uh, meat, I guess, stuff that I've been doing this sort of pre. <coughs> predecessors of uh, the G-Lab, um, just to, you know, explain what I mean by entertainment and go beyond games. Uh, I used to be a musician, or can you ever stop being a musician? Probably not. Um, but, uh, so I did early on this experiment where people could order a CD and in exchange they could send me something back. You know, like flowers and whatever. And Radiohead did this uh, a couple of years later, where you could pay for MP3s as much as you wanted to pay them for. And so I made this basically a trading game, right? This was my own label, and uh, that was got a lot of press in Germany at least, and uh, it was interesting. Um, we did early on biofeedback health stuff where we connected people to a whole room. So imagine that uh, you would sort of uh, uh, you had to move faster than the lights, so we sort of switched the lights and we coupled this with biofeedback and skin conductivity. And you had to sort of uh, jog with the light and, you know, locomote and that kind of stuff. That was uh, back in the day when I was studying at DTH in Zurich. Um, I did an a early project, you can still look at it, where you navigate a website by playing little games. So it, this is changing the way that people interact with you know, browsing, a very profane thing, but perhaps not. So you could say early gamification example. Um, we did something where we built a, a very big uh, tourist game uh, where we said we want to reach younger audiences who are not interested in sightseeing anymore and they are not interested in history. And this is also still up. There's a YouTube video out of, uh, up for that. Um, and um, this was in Regensburg, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in, in uh, Germany, in Bavaria. And so you could rent this at the tourist information. It was gesture-based, geo-positioning, all pre-iPhone early on, four square-ish in a way. Uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, you checked into places that you got a quest, and then you could decide, design your own adventure style if you wanted to go to deliver that love letter that had been sitting there for hundreds of years. Please deliver my love letter of, you know, that kind of thing. That was, yeah, a real service that we offered there for a while. Um, we've worked for the city of Seoul. Um, actually, uh, I, this was a very technological project uh, where we uh, visualized massive amounts of data, um, traffic, climate, weather data, crime data with Google uh, Maps and, uh, sorry, Google Earth and Google Maps. And the idea was um, we also built little tools for letting people sort of participate in certain decisions. And also we had this thing where they had, so we could visualize the energy consumption of certain buildings and areas. And then we had people sort of compete over who would consume less energy that went for a two week trial really. <coughs> and that sort of sits around, has been idling. This is a very current uh, uh, topic. Uh, we're working with Audi, uh, the German car maker, 
quite closely actually uh, on several projects. One of, and mostly all of this is really about what's the future of mobility in the city and how is this tied to games? And you know, could you reward you know, certain types of behavior? Not necessarily using a car, of course, you know, it's their core business, um, but perhaps it's something else, car sharing, but then it comes from Audi, who knows? So we're thinking quite a bit about that and also uh, sort of, this is an example, a early, early prototype where we're connecting kids on the rear seat with the locations they pass by, but they learn about locations, okay? So it's not just dump gaming, but really sort of a way of um, connecting people with places they pass. Fleeting experiences, really. This is a postdoc in my lab, Jonathan Duckworth. Um, he uh, is developing this, how can you say it, really sort of, it's not really games, it's toys for people who uh, typically suffer from uh, brain injuries uh, after accidents, motorcycle accidents. That's what you get. And uh, yeah, this is slow work. Not spectacular, just very slow work. But very cool, it's really good stuff. <laughs> this is my pet project. Uh, <laughs> it's called Network Detox. Because uh, I also would like to, because everyone here is like, oh yeah, technology is awesome, la 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 la, you know. But perhaps it's all bullshit because, you know, we're forgetting about the real things. And, um, you know, gardening and that kind of thing. Although there's an app for that, of course, for gardening, yes. Um, but, um, yeah, a really good app, actually. Uh, well, several, thousands, hundreds, but there's one that's called Grow Buddy, and it has been growing out of the cannabis, cannabis growing community. And you so, sort of track all the little planties that you have, and I love it. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> you know, sometimes these things come out of corners where you wouldn't really expect them to come from. It's just really funny. Anyway, so we launched this thing. It's a fake, of course, satirical company that, or a practice where you can get um, certain things, such as um, a chip that you can implant that lets you fall asleep whenever you try to go online. Or net off, which um, is a pill, a uh, tablet that we're uh, developing to you know, address the, we call it the quick fix solution to uh, the problem of um, you know, the pain that you suffer when you're not online. And here we have play off where you get to play with kittens and t uh, total awareness toddlers, um, or oh, total response toddlers, sorry, mm. without any need uh, for tech. So this was last weekend in Sydney. I did uh, these exercises with people where you turn off, you know, you turn off your device. So we do this stuff too. Um, really what we want to do with Games for Change is, um, you know, we're seeking partnerships um, with organizations, of course. Uh, we're really closely working with the city of Melbourne. And we want to create a gamified conference, meaning that we, and I'll show you an example, what that means, really. Just quickly for the site, it, uh, this uh, event will take place at Federation Square, as I've mentioned before. Very uh, designerly architectural site um, in the middle of the city next to, uh, you know, the main train uh, station, and uh, yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's an art center. And it's an art center. It has the uh, Australian, uh, sorry, thanks, Center Australian for the Track. Moving Image, la la la. So already a, a lot of audiences uh, coming there. And it's, I mean, as you can see, it's in the summer and <coughs> you get uh, a lot of outdoors thingies. There's a huge display that we want to use for large public display things. Um, and as, as I've said, um, this has a lot to do with Melbourne and the city of Melbourne being really interested in what is it that really makes us a livable city because they don't, let's say, trust the, the reports. This typically comes from the Economist Intelligence Unit in Mercer and this typically numbers that you get for CEOs, you know, to uh, better, to get to higher bony and that kind of thing. And, and uh, really their interest is um, in this stuff, for example. So what we're doing, what we're working on is we're identifying city challenges, which could, be, which could be waste or, I don't know, something. And then we're uh, developing this uh, tool where you can sort of uh, we, uh, take on this quest, basically, and then you're looking for a team, and, uh, and, um, and then you're suggesting uh, solutions or you try to figure out something. So we're working on this. It's in a concept stage, but got uh, partners for working on this, and um, 
yeah, so interested in their interest, the city of Melbourne is interested in youth, recycling, wellness, community, and livability. Yep. A couple of people who have already confirmed to speak there. Um, really, people who are really, really doing interesting stuff. Um, I just need to find my, my thing here. Melbourne Company is ready to give Silicon Valley a run for its money. Using new technology, designers have made a computer game that you can play on someone's back. Apple loves it. Okay, so it's just a camera until it finds this. And then the t-shirt comes to life. This is insane. It's gaming we've never seen before. Using augmented reality, the iPad turns the marker on Aaron's shirt into an alien tunnel. Oh, and you can move. I can move as well, yeah. Makes it a little bit tricky, right, if you want to screw around with your friends. Aaron and his friends developed this in a fortnight. We're taking this core technology, which has been around for a little bit, right, this augmented reality marker based, location based, but we add a full game on top, a full experience, you can play it on, um, while it's printed out on a, on a screen or on a poster. A few lucky LA kids got the chance to try it out. And it's very active in this, and so they're doing Man, his back's like a tunnel. Oh. Got, um, and with business cards that are yeah. equally mind-blowing. And also it's the first time that I've ever seen yeah. It's little wonder their Melbourne company, nicely. Two Balls, so cool. is freaking out some like of the world's most powerful nerds, the big ones, thing, and, uh, at yeah. Apple. We're very good. Uh, <laughs> You're very good. <laughs> we're very good. Uh, some might call us awesome. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> we're really good, yes. Here, the Hive um, is a initiative that just got funding from Screen Australia. Um, it's a, this is going to be a documentary meets a social game that they're designing um, that is trying to explore why it's better to collaborate, to let people collaborate rather than just to go cowboy. Um, very interesting. They call it a transmedia project um, that is in development um, to address big issues, you know. So really why collaboration could probably lead to solving bigger problems. Sort of the Jane McGonigal mantra, I guess, and trying to look at ways to do this. But they're shooting doc a documentary on top of it, so I think that's kind of exciting. We've got uh, a group of very seasoned developers in Melbourne called League of Geeks, or we sometimes call them, we call them League of Greeks because uh, they were at a conference once and then, you know, it's the typo on the, on the badge and so, well say, hey, here's the Greeks coming. Um, and so what's interesting about them and game changing is that they are, um, well, they are basically organized as a collective and independent people who are, who've developed this kind of point system and reward system for whoever contributes as much. And they're getting sort of uh, a share of the IP of the game that they're developing. So they're trying to make it sort of dependent on how much someone is uh, feeding into the team. It's very interesting. And very they try to be very democratic about it. So there's sort of these rules and, and how you, know, you sort of compensate if, you, if you're sick and that kind of stuff. So sort of very collaborative. I really like that. And they're good chaps, so. And of course, we'll be bringing uh, international people to Melbourne. Uh, you know, uh, perhaps you've seen some here. Uh, can't announce that yet, but uh, we're working on it. So just to wrap up, um, uh, we're, we're wanting to look at social change and changing the game. Hope that I have given you a couple of ideas what that could mean. Um, games and entertainment, not, not just games. Cities, play, learning, health. Want to develop the organization there as part of RMIT and, and the G Lab and the community. And um, yeah. Actually, um, Marigo, who is the festival director of this uh, festival, is not only a doctoral student of mine, which is kind of funny, um, but she also is the executive producer, because Marigo is from Melbourne. And Cameron is here. Hey, Cameron. <laughs> She's the event manager. And um, yeah, so please come or you know, share with us what you'd like to do with Games for Change in Australia and New Zealand. And we're launching our website today, so you get to see, you're the first people to see it. It's just a website, really. But um, 
you can sign up for a newsletter down here. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.